the base superstructure formula, has been a significant factor in the analysis of art and thought, often resulting in a description or theory of art as reflection. This metaphor has a long history in the analysis of art and ideas, but its physical process and relationship have proved compatible with several different theories. Art can be seen as reflecting not just appearances, but the reality behind them, such as the inner nature of the world, or its constitutive forms. Or art is seen as reflecting not the lifeless world, but the world, as seen in the mind of the artist. Materialism presents a fundamental challenge to these theories, as if the real world is material. Reflection will be necessarily of a material reality. This can lead to the concept of false or distorted reflection, in which so, in ething metaphysics, ideology, prevents true reflection. Similarly, the mind of the artist can be seen as itself materially conditioned, making its reflection not independent, but itself a material function. Two versions of this materialism became dominant in Marxist thinking. The interpretation of consciousness as mere reflexes, echoes, phantoms, and sublimates, and the alternative inclusion of consciousness, a scientific truth, based on real knowledge of the material world. This alternative could be extended relatively easily to include accounts of knowledge and thought, but left art relatively neglected and exposed. Within this version, the most common account of art was then a positivist theory in which the metaphor of reflection played a central role. The true function of art was defined in terms of realism, or less often, naturalism, both 19th century terms, much affected by related concepts of science. To know the base as a process at once complicates the object reflection model, which had appeared so powerful. Rival definitions of freelism and naturalism had begun a secular and radical emphasis on human social knowledge. Yet, the enclosure of each concept within a special doctrine of the object as it really is reduced their radical challenge. A different materialist theory became necessary, as only in very simple cases could the object reflection model be illustrated or verified. There was already a crucial distinction between mechanical materialism, seeing the world as objects and excluding activity, and historical materialism, seeing the material life process as human activity. The simplest theories of reflection were based on a mechanical materialism, but a different account appeared possible if the real world was grasped as a material social process with certain inherent qualities and tendencies. The decisive theory of art as reflection, not now of objects, but of real and verifiable social and historical processes, was extensively maintained and elaborated. However, it has been heavily attacked from older and often more substantial positions, and it has been widely identified as a damaging consequence of a materialist outlook. The theory of art as reflection has been criticized for suppressing the actual work on material, social, and intellectual aspects of art. This is due to the idea of mediation, which was intended to describe an active process. In idealist philosophy, it had been a concept of reconciliation between opposites within a totality. A more neutral sense had also developed, emphasizing mediation as an indirect connection or agency between separate kinds of acts. The attraction of mediation 
as a term to describe the relationship between society and art, or between the base and the superstructure, is evident. However, it is not expected to find directly reflected social realities in art, as these often pass through a process of mediation, in which their original content is changed. This change involved in mediation can be either a matter of indirect expression, the social realities are projected or disguised, and to recover them is a process of working back through the mediation to their original forms. This negative sense of mediation, supported by psychoanalytical concepts such as repression and sublimation, and by rationalization in a sense, close to the negative sense of ideology, has coexisted with a sense, which offers to be positive. This is especially the contribution of the Frankfurt School, where the change involved in mediation is not necessarily seen as distortion or disguise, rather, all active relations between different kinds of being and consciousness are inevitably mediated, and this process is not a separable agency, but intrinsic to the properties of the object itself. It is difficult to be sure how much is gained by substituting the metaphor of mediation for the metaphor of reflection. On the one hand, it goes beyond the passivity of reflection theory. It indicates an active process of some kind. On the other hand, it perpetuates a basic dualism. Art does not reflect social reality. The superstructure does not reflect the base, and culture is a mediation of society. In the inheritance of idealist philosophy, the process is usually seen as a mediation between categories, which have been assumed to be distinct. Mediation, in this range of use, seems little more than a sophistication of reflection. However, the underlying problem is obvious. If reality and speaking about reality, the material social process, and language are taken as categorically distinct, concepts such as reflecting or mediating are inevitable. Mediation is always the less alienated concept when it indicates an active and substantial process. In its modern development, it approaches the sense of inherent constitutive consciousness and is important as an alternative to simple reductionism, in which every real act or work is methodically rendered back to an assumed primary category, usually specified, self-specified, as concrete reality. When the process of mediation is seen as positive and substantial as a necessary process of making mean-spirited values, it is really only a hindrance to describe it as mediation at all.